Stephanie Metz here in the studio about to start carving one of my maquettes. It's a kind of in-between size form for these larger pieces that I'm going to be making that will be almost human sized. Um, I'm going to be carving styrofoam using hot wires. So I'm in this part of my studio where I've uh, blocked it in with plastic right by my windows and the windows are open because fumes come off this stuff as you cut it. I don't want to breathe it or spread it around the studio. I'm going to start with, as I often do, just kind of a sketch and then I've scaled it up a little bit and then I've made these puncture marks because I just held it over the styrofoam and just quickly transferred the marks and then drew them in with pen. So I'm going to start carving away at this using some of these different shapes of tools which are basically just wires with an electrical current through them. I have to move them slowly through the wool, uh, heh, wool through the styrofoam because they melt it as you go. So here we go. I am much more of a build up additive sculptor than a carve away subtractive sculptor. I just it's just the way I work. So this is kind of a stretch for me a little bit. But hey, that's a good thing. It's theoretically so quick to cut the uh, foam with the hot wire that sometimes you end up rushing and bending the wire and you could snap it. So you got to really let the heat cut it. It's not the force of your hand moving the wire. So I've got a rough shape formed. Um, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five lobes on my drawing and only one, two, three, four on this because I couldn't fit it on that original piece of styrofoam. So I'm just going to glue another piece on and, and, uh, and then carve it back. This stuff, again, it's just super forgiving. I can just glue it and hack it together if this glue ever works. I don't need much because I'm going to carve it away. Here's a piece that I had to stick on. I didn't have enough. So I've done as much carving on this piece as I'm going to with the hot wire tools. Uh, you can see how faceted it is from all the little cuts. The reason I like to do most of the removal of material using those tools is because it eliminates all the tiny little bits that come off the styrofoam. But next I'm going to move into another part of my studio to do some sanding and shaping to get this a little closer to what I'm looking for. But for now, it's a decent start. I closed off a whole separate part of my studio so I could keep all the tiny little styrofoam bits contained when I'm doing any sort of sanding. So I just took plastic sheeting and hung it from the ceiling and then did some contractor zippers that are sticky and attached to the plastic so I can keep it all inside. Here inside this space I've got basically a table I can work on. I've got some shelves holding some of the styrofoam and foam rubber that I work with. I've got a jumpsuit, which is important for putting over my clothes and trying to keep some of those little bits from getting all over the place. And then I have a shop vac that I cleaned out before I started. It's only for use of styrofoam bits, so I can reclaim all those tiny little bits and use them to stuff other pieces. And then I've got various rasps and sandpaper and uh, knives to further shape the work. Okay, so I'm suited up in my coveralls, which keeps some of this staticky stuff from sticking to me all day. At least eliminates some of it. And I wear gloves, too. I even put little rubber bands around my cuffs because that's where a lot of the tiny little bits want to go in. And I wear a dust mask because not only am I sanding off tiny little particulates, but virtually all of my styrofoam and foam rubber is previously owned, recycled. Um, which means a lot of it has been stored in dusty, gross warehouses for a long time and 
I don't know what else I would be breathing in. So I'm just trying to, you know, prolong the life. Okay. You can see how quickly and easily I can smooth over those facets using just this simple rasp tool. So after about less than an hour of sanding and shaping, and then about 15 minutes of vacuuming everything up, I've got this a lot more shaped how I want it. It's kind of, I'm hoping, will show the effect of gravity, and in the actual piece there are going to be some more folds uh, in between where the different lobes meet. But uh, relatively quick for a sample model piece. And I'm only somewhat covered in bits after a lot of vacuuming myself off. So I've gone from a block of styrofoam and a drawing to a three-dimensional form by cutting it with hot wires and then rasping and sanding it. Uh, but this really is a means to an end for me. This is not the finished sculpture. This is a tool I can use to create a three-dimensional pattern, well, a two-dimensional pattern out of industrial felt so that then I can scale this shape up larger in a stitched shape. Um, I'm going to do it kind of like this one where I've got the foam inside, so I'm laying the industrial felt over it, pinning it in place, cutting it so that I can figure out how to make a larger pattern. Um, so as far as preparation and tools go, it's, you know, it's a pretty, pretty good way to do it. So I hope you have uh, learned something about my process or how you can carve and contain styrofoam. Thanks for watching.